Hey guys, this is Bill Allen with Evolve Lab, and today I'm super excited to be talking about this sweet integration of Verus inside Autodesk Forma. Now, for those that don't know, Autodesk Forma is a cloud-based conceptual modeling tool for architects, and Verus is an AI rendering and ideation tool. Now, Verus paired with Forma is pretty awesome because since we're working in a conceptual model environment, you can basically augment your building with Verus and do some really sweet ideation, some rendering, and really quick design studies. So with that, let's jump right into it. All right, so here we are instead of Autodesk Forma, this cloud-based conceptual modeling program. It's amazing, very intuitive. There's a ton of analysis tools in here. We have, you know, wind analysis, we have operational energy analysis. And I basically, I just started using some of the push-pull conceptual modeling um, features in it. And you'll see, I, I did this kind of like undulating uh, balcony overhang for this kind of multifamily kind of project. That was kind of what I was shooting for. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna start now utilizing Verus on top of this to start doing some ideation, some renderings. And um, to do this, what you do is you go to the extensions uh, option right here and you hit add extension. And there's gonna be a whole series of different extensions that you can add into Autodesk Forma. And right here we have the Evolve Lab Verus extension. Now I've already added it, so I have the screen checkbox. Uh, if you don't have that, just go ahead and hit the add button and it should uh, add it to Autodesk Forma for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then once it's added, you'll see it as an option right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this and launch it. I'm just gonna make this uh, window a little bit bigger here. And I'm also just gonna um, set my proportions where I want them at. All right, there we go. And now if I go to the uh, explore mode, I can actually go ahead and fire off just a few renderings here with some of these pre-baked uh, render settings. So I'm just going to pick a few of these and uh, see what we get. Okay, so each uh, rendering took on average about 30 seconds here. So in about a minute and a half, I already have three design options that I can start working with using kind of this explore mode. You can pick these. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the compose tab because I want to start having a little bit more control over what I'm getting here, some of the results. So I'm just going to type in the prompt uh, here. I'm going to say award-winning rendering of modern parametric building let's say uh rounded overhang balconies uh rounded edges i'm gonna say uh golden hour to kind of give that you know sunset kind of look and let's say uh city background uh, i'm gonna go ahead and crank up my geometry override here because i'm a, i want the ai to have some creative freedom here for some of these design options I think I'm gonna turn on Turbo Nature and Atmospheric as well. Turbo Nature is gonna give us some more vegetation and Atmospheric is gonna give it kind of that um, cloudy kind of uh, foggy kind of look. And uh, let's see what some of these options look like. All right, so um, you know this rendering took 26 seconds, next one took 22 seconds. Some really amazing uh, imagery we're getting back here. So you can see where we went from just kind of this conceptual model here, uh, and based on the prompt leveraging AI, we got some really amazing results. One of the things to point out here is that this is my actual project. So maybe unlike some kind of text to image tools, uh, this is using the Forma model as a substrate. So this is really powerful where it's, it's using, you know, my actual project, the edges, the boundaries that I've, I've put in here. Um, I kind of used this gradation of the geometry override right, right around to 36 at the moment. So it's still honoring a lot of those kinds of um, push uh, pull kind of extensions that are happening with the facade here. And uh, really, I'm very impressed with some of these results, actually. Um, so let's go ahead and have some more fun. Let's try to uh, play with some different materials here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, let's say, brick, let's say red brick and glass facade and see what we get. And I'm going to maybe crank up my geometry override just a slight more um, and yeah, I think I, I like kind of these other settings where the turbo nature and atmospherics on. So I'm going to do a few more options here. All right, we got our other four renderings back. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is pretty cool. 
So you can see we started getting um, some of that red that's coming through, definitely um, some really interesting uh, movements here with some of this geometry, a lot of glass. Uh, and again, you know, I didn't necessarily have to model every single one of these different design options. It started to ha have a little bit more creative freedom. You know, it's starting to diverge a little bit more from my my model, but it's it's fairly close. Still has some of that the same kind of movements that I was looking for, but really took uh, this to the next level here. And the quality is just amazing. Um, part of this, you know, is some of the prompting that we're putting in here. Uh, award-winning rendering, um, you know, we're saying golden hour. And so it's really getting us some of these amazing results. So those are just a few little tips and tricks. Um, let's try something else here. Let's try uh, going away from maybe some of the red brick and maybe let's try uh, working with uh, some wood uh, slats uh, as part of our prompt. Let's say 3D fabricated facade and just see what we get here. I'm just kind of curious. Okay, we just got our four design options back. All right, definitely a lot of wood slats going, uh, coming in here. Uh, again, quite a bit of differences from all these different design options. A big reason for this is my geometry override. You know, I did bump this up quite a bit. Um, let's just see if we temper this down just a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna bring this back to around a 30 because I think it's just changing uh, the model just a little bit too much, uh, even though some of these options are really, really cool. I wanted to try to respect uh, base, my basic building outline and some of those floors. So I'm gonna just do fire off a few more here. All right, so we got our four renderings back here. Let's see, so if I kind of uh, toggle between the two of these, you'll see that it's it's really trying to follow those edges and the outlines of my original building here uh, quite a bit closer than the other ones I was getting. I also have some of those wood slats. Okay, so something else I wanna show you is the render from same seed function. Now this is such a cool feature, um, especially for this kind of uh, study. So you can see here, I have this really beautiful rendering. I really like how this one turned out here. What I wanna do is I wanna illustrate how we can show some different seasons, but using this same new design that Veris had created using Autodesk Forma. So I'm gonna turn on the render from same seed. So I'm gonna use this seed and Using the same prompt, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in autumn, uh, fall, colorful leaves, okay? And let's see what the result that Varus gives us here. Okay, so we just got our rendering back and look at this. So we have this design option and since it rendered from same seed, you'll see that the aesthetic, the design of the project is mostly the same here. It's sticking to a lot of those same um, geometry movements that are occurring. But what it's done is because I rendered from same seed, it started from that same location uh, the same genesis, if you will, and it went ahead and applied these word prompts, autumn, fall, colorful leaves. Okay, let's try something different. What I wanna do is I wanna play with some different render styles. And so something I wanna show you is that you don't always have to have photorealistic or cinematic kind of imagery. Um, some clients really resonate with more kind of conceptual pencil sketches, watercolors, those kinds of things. And so even though, you know, we have a digital model here and a digital rendering that we're creating, um, what I can do is I can actually get that kind of aesthetic or conceptual kind of look as well. Um, so I could say uh, maybe instead of uh, award-winning rendering, I'll say award-winning uh, watercolor painting. And then we'll use all of the same uh, settings here. And uh, I'm gonna make sure this the render from same seed is off. And let's go ahead and see what we get as some results here. All right, we just got our results back. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, so we got some pretty sweet uh, can kind of conceptual watercolor kind of looking uh, renderings here. So if you have a client that really resonates with this style, you can also use Veris and artificial intelligence to really start to get these kinds of results uh, as well. Um, again, the, my geometry overrides up quite a bit. It is still trying to hold true to some of those movements that I have here. This one probably the closest, um, but gosh, look at this, it's just amazing. It looks like you know an actual watercolor or painting uh, that someone has produced. And we're going from kind of the digital to the more analog kind of look uh, which is amazing. And we're able to get, you know, these different results. This one took 14 seconds, this one 15 seconds. Uh, so we can get all of these different design options really, really quickly. Uh, man, I'm super impressed with some of the results we're getting here. I hope you guys are as well. So kind of in summary here, you know, uh, 
just going all the way from the beginning, uh, we were using some of the explore functions uh, to get some of these renderings. Uh, we started using that kind of uh, compose where we started to drive more of the prompting and uh, the results, the output we were gonna get. Uh, we really started to crank up that geometry override here to really start kind of going through that more ideation versus rendering of uh, kind of workflow. And then also we were looking at um, rendering those in different styles, you know, whether it's uh, summer or fall or winter. Uh, some of the results we were getting were really phenomenal. And then lastly, we went to some of these watercolor uh, images at, at the end here. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I certainly have enjoyed uh, making it. This tool is so much fun uh, to utilize. Uh, if you want, go ahead and get out there and use Forma, uh, add the extension Varus uh, for it. And I hope you guys have as much fun as I am. Have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.